Hey everybody, sorry I'm a couple of minutes late. It has been a crazy morning here. Um, I had an appointment with Ina um, to have her trigger thumb looked at. And good news, it's wait and see. So hopefully it will resolve on its own. Um, let's see, what else? I was working on some slow curl stuff. I tried to make sure that I put a notice up that we were going to be talking about lace today. And I grabbed that Rosita shawl again because it was handy. Um, so when we look at lace, uh, we're going to look at yarn overs and we're going to look at decreases. So yarn overs are always your increase and the, or a design element and the, um, decreases are things like slip, slip knits or purl two togethers or knit two togethers or slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over, etc., etc. There's many different kinds of decreases that can be used in lace. So we're gonna take a look at that today and I made sure that I grabbed um, my Haya Haya interchangeable set and a bag of odds and ends of yarn. Trust me, that is not all I have. That's just a small bag I keep for demonstrations. Um, and then I also grabbed one of my kits so that I have um, one of my little stitch marker bags that I keep so I can show you how I, how I prep to make lace. Um, so we're going to talk about all of that today, but before we do, let's see, free shipping is still on at Black Sheep in uh, the U.S. We have discounted shipping rates internationally. Um, still 10% off most things, but not everything with that uh, hashtag Black Sheep Craft Time um, or just Black Sheep Craft Time for the code online. Um, but make sure that you are tagging us so that we can see your lovely projects that you're working on. Um, what else? What else do I need to tell you about? Slow Yarn Crawl starts Friday, and I have been crazy busy with Slow Yarn Crawl. I did finally get some information about that up on the Black Sheep site. So if you go to blacksheepfiberemporium.com, then um, I have a little, uh, what do they call that? Oh, like a photo. It's not a photo. I have an ad <laughs> on the slider that you can click on, and it will take you to more info about the Slow Yarn Crawl. And thank you, Tina for getting the passports up. So the passports are up and available to be purchased through Black Sheep as well um, because we are participating since we are a, a donor. We're also um, kind of the people who put together the slow yarn crawl. Tina had the idea and well, I just shared, you know, my willingness to work and figure things out. So anyway, lots of fun stuff going on. Um, and we'll get into lace here in just a minute, but uh, here I'll show you. So I have been uh, planting more things. So my tomatoes are growing over there, but um, I have a pot now that's gonna be some dwarf um, coxcomb. And then I think I put more herbs in that one. And then my mom bought me a little bonsai tree for Mother's Day. And then I decided I needed some rose. There we go. And then all of the herbs um, decided to grow. And so now I have this like, green spot out here on my deck and um, and I really like it so um, we're talking about moving some of the patio furniture up Avi brought up the uh, bench so we're talking about bringing up some other stuff to make it even nicer out here when I get to talk to you guys so anyhow um, we're gonna get started with some lace today and um, I'm going to show you I don't know how good the camera is on this but uh, let me bring it up. Yeah, let's see. I don't know if you can see those strong increases and decreases. Um, so when you use paired increases and decreases and you use uh, knit two togethers and slip slip knits, you can make some really nice architecture in your knitting. You can put some really nice lines in. So that's why it's important to know several of those increases, or excuse me, several of those decreases to pair with your yarn over increase. And in lace, um, the yarn overs are used two ways. They are used to increase the piece, and they're also used as um, a feature because you're using those holes to create a pattern. So now that we have that out of the way, um, there are two different kinds of lace um, in knitting. So there's lace knitting and there's knitted lace. So lace knitting has patterning on both sides where um, you're pattern on the right side, pattern on the wrong side, pattern on the right side, pattern on the wrong side. With um, knitted lace, you have patterning on one side and then you have a rest row on the back, whether that's 
um, a knit row or a purl row. So you've got pattern and then rest row, pattern and then rest row. And I like both, I do both. I tend to do far more knitted lace than actual lace knitting because I like the fabric, I like the way it looks, and I like having that think, 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 relax, think, 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 relax rhythm so that I can do a row and work it across and then have a relaxed row and I don't have to think as hard. <laughs> so anyway, um, let me go ahead. I am going to get out, um, what should we use today? I could get out the tweed. The tweed makes pretty lace. Um, or what else do I have down in here? Boy, I have some random stuff in here. Oh, here's some of the handmaiden. Oh, this stuff's nice. Mm. There's some little leftover. This is silk. This is pure silk from Handmaiden. Should we do this? I want to do this. We're going to play with this. So this is that lovely Handmaiden silk. Um, so I'm going to take out some actual lace weight yarn. not even going to use fingering today, although I probably should. I may switch to that if we need it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll use some... Maybe some fours. Let's use some fours. Um, the fives, I probably could use a five or a six with the fingering weight, but yeah, let's go ahead and use some fours. That's really, I mean, we're just going to practice and play. Hi, Debbie! You're, you're checking everything out, huh? Do you knit? I don't know. I know, I know Debbie because of rabbits, so... <laughs> I don't know if Debbie's a knitter or a crocheter, but I know I know Debbie from rabbits. Yes. And I was hoping that we would have a little more time when we got to see each other. Oh gosh, a couple weeks ago now? I don't know. Feels like forever ago. But uh, it just didn't quite work out that way. I took her tomatoes, because you know I've been growing a lot of tomatoes. And I still have a lot of tomatoes. But that's okay. Um, my very good friend Lauren is coming down. Friday. That's two days. Oh no. I've got to get that bathroom cleaned. Yeah. So she's coming down Friday and then she's going to stay until the following Wednesday and we are going to quarantine together so that she can see Ina and uh, have a little bit of crafty time fun because she does usually come down for my birthday or her birthday I mean um, for the whole weekend. So it should be a good time and we're going to knit and we're going to I don't know, knit and tat, and we'll probably do some sewing, and maybe we'll do some embroidery. I don't even know what all we're going to do, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have a crafty weekend, and it's going to be great. So, okay, let's get started. I'm going to flip the camera. So if you have um, yarn and needles, then we will um, walk okay. through what we're going to do. All righty. So here, we're going to flip the camera, and... Let's see, there's a handy dandy little cloth. So I just took some size fours and put together my interchangeables and then I have some lace yarn here and um, you could be using fingering. If you're using fingering, try a five or a six um, because the point of this exercise is to play with lace. So all we wanna do is go ahead and cast on and I'm going to use a long tail because that's fast and easy and I've done it before. And we're just gonna long tail cast on about 20 stitches. That's usually what I recommend. It's enough to make a swatch, it's enough to play with. Um, 20 stitches is, is good, it's very good. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so I'm just gonna take my 20 stitches here and then I'm going to do a knit row and a purl row so we can just establish something to hold on to. I've done that in the past when I was showing you things and same idea again. Um, just gonna go in, I don't know if I can get it. There we go. That first stitch is always fun. And I am a continental knitter, so I hold my yarn in my left hand and I pick with my left. And many people who um, start with crochet or come from crochet and then learn knitting 
uh, do this because this is how, oh boy, this isn't good, I split my yarn. That is a hazard if your needles are too sharp is that you can split your yarn. So that's good to know. Oh, this, <laughs> man, this silk feels so good. <gasps> oh, it feels so lovely in my fingers. Man, I'm gonna have to get some more silk, I think. I should do some more designing in silk. I wonder if Ina will leave me alone long enough to do that. Probably not, I'm gonna guess. Okay, so there we've knit one row. And now I'm going to just purl a row. And then we're going to talk about yarn overs and we're going to talk about decreases. So this again, we're just, I cast on 20 stitches. I've knit a row, I'm purling a row. And I'm just doing that so that it gives me a little something to hold on to. Just something a little different little base. Okay. Trying not to roll my silk onto the deck either. Trying to keep it up here on the table. Okay. So there we go. I've cast on 20 stitches and we just knit a row and purled a row. Now, when I come across this time, we're going to put in some yarn overs and a yarn over is really simple. I know I the first time I made a yarn over, I thought, that that can't be right. It's way too easy. I mean, I did something wrong. I, I don't know what I'm doing. It can't, it can't be that simple. But it really is that simple. Um, because a yarn over is really just where, and all I did was just knit two stitches there. You literally put the yarn over your needle. Now, this is sometimes called yarn around. But um, the idea is that you are just putting an extra loop of yarn on here to make a hole or to make an increase um, using a hole, a, a hole that makes lace. So that's, that's the whole idea here. Um, now once you've made a yarn over, if you're keeping your stitch count the same, so if it's the same on every single row, every yarn over will have a paired decrease because the yarn over is an increase. So for every increase, you have to have a decrease, whether that's a slip slip knit or a knit two together or some other decrease. So that's an important thing to remember. If you have the same number of stitches on every row, for every increase, there will be a decrease. If you don't have the same number of stitches on every row, then you will find that not every increase will have a decrease. And sometimes that might just be um, like on a triangular shawl. Many of those are built so that you have four increases every row. You have one at the outside edge and then one uh, near the center spine. And so you'll see four increases that do not have a paired decrease. Um, for other shapes, you may have less or more. So it's just important to remember that if you are making shapes that you will have increases that do not have a decrease. If you are staying the same on every row, if it's a square and you're knitting it square, so you've cast on one edge and you're just gonna go until it's equal all the way around, or a rectangle, either one of those. You're gonna have the same lace on every side. Um, same number of increases and decreases. So it's just something to pay attention to. So here's my yarn over, and now we're going to do a slip slip knit. So if we slip, slip, put our needle back through, and then knit two together. And that's your slip slip knit, pretty simple. So now let's say we're gonna do a knit two together. So we're just gonna go into the second stitch. We're going to knit both of those stitches together and pull them off the needle and then make a yarn over to match it. And then let's knit a couple of stitches in between. And now this time, let's do a yarn over, slip one, we'll knit two together. We'll pass the slipped stitch over and then yarn over again. So that makes a little different decrease. And let's just do a couple of stitches here and then let's do a yarn over, slip, slip, knit one, and then pass two slip stitches over and we're gonna yarn over because we're gonna keep it the same number of stitches. So I decrease two, which means I have to increase two. And then let's just knit all the way across to the end. So I knit two, did a yarn over, we did a slip slip knit, which is your left leaning. We did a knit two together, which is your right leaning. 
and a yarn over because we're trying to make sure that we keep them paired. So for every increase, which is a yarn over, we have a decrease. Increase, decrease, decrease, increase. All right, then we knit a couple of stitches. And then we did a yarn over, and then I slipped one, knit two together, and passed the slip stitch over because I was making uh, more of a centered decrease. But because we've decreased two stitches away, I have to make sure I put another yarn over in there. So two yarn overs to match the two decreases. Then I did a couple of stitches. And then I did a yarn over, and then we slipped two, knit one, and then did the yarn over again because we have two stitches decreased here, so we need two stitches increased to pair with it. Now we're just gonna purl back across. And if you've been watching, you'll notice that I use a form of the Portuguese purl when I am purling, which is all with my thumb motion. See my nice thumb motion? Up, down, hold it together, pull it off. It's a very, very fast purl. Um, makes it really easy to purl if you can teach yourself to do this. The key to this is that you have to keep that yarn um, moving over your thumb so you can't keep it too far back behind your knuckle if you're going to do this Portuguese purl. All right, so there we go. We've purled one row across. Now let's take a look at our lace and we can really compare these increases and decreases. So remember the beauty of lace is that once it is blocked, it opens up a ton and I'm just gonna pull on it so that you can see what we have going on. Okay, so here's our yarn over. Remember this was our slip slip knit. And boy, now you can really see how it leans, can't you? It leans to that left side versus the knit two together, which leans to the right. So these two stitches when paired together, you can make really nice straight lines with them. Uh, you can add some really nice dimension to um, lines just like here. You can see this nice strong straight line that's using the same decrease all the way along and then again all the way along and then again all the way along and those make nice strong lines in your lace knitting. And then here you can see we've used um, one of those centered decreases. So there's several different ones that are considered a centered decrease. Um, that slip one knit two together is very popular as is the slip slip knit. They have slightly different looks in your knitting, um, but they are essentially interchangeable. So if you don't like a slip one knit two together, you can substitute the slip two knit one. So with this one, you slip one stitch, you knit two together, and then you pass the slip stitch over so that you get both the right and the left leaning. This one does something similar. You don't get quite the strength of the lean in the slip two knit one, but it's a little, it's a little softer, a little more subtle. So if that's what you're going for, you can swap that out. It's totally fine. I tend to use the slip one knit two together. Um, I, that's what I like. Uh, it is much less directional than just knitting three together. So let's go ahead and um, I'm just gonna knit a row and purl a row. And then let's try a couple of knit three togethers so that you can see the difference between um, the knit three together and the other stitches that we've used. I'm just gonna knit a row, knit a boring row. And I'm doing this because I wanna put a little bit of background as I think of it between our um, patterned rows so that you can see the differences a little bit better because this is just for fun. It's me showing you how to do things. It's a little tiny sample. So does anybody have questions so far? Now is a great time to put questions up because I can see them and I can answer them. Or do you have a suggestion for what we should do on Friday? I don't, uh, don't firmly have any idea. I suppose I could show something else with tatting or um, I could get out the embroidery and I could show you some embroidery. Uh, I still have that turkey work and the stem stitch to do on my bees because I haven't made any more progress on my bee sampler. <laughs> so that's a possibility. Does anyone feel strongly either way? 
Or we could talk about color work. I like doing color work so we could talk about some of the differences. There was a great article in Piecework so we could talk about the differences between, um, let's see, twined, stranded, twisted, and there was one more. Twined, stranded, twisted, and I'll have to look it up. But there's four different methods that they talked about. It's very interesting. So we could talk about color work, if not this week, maybe next week. Okay, so let's go try that knit three together. So I'm just going to knit, knit, and now I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to knit three together. This is when having sharp needles and um, good tension can make a huge difference. There we go. There we go. Knit three together. Yarn over. Say knit. One, two, three. Let's do four. Yarn over. And now this time we could do a slip, 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 knit. Yarn over. Because remember we need to keep them matched so we have the same number of stitches in our little sample here. And knit. A few more. Do I guess what haven't I done yet? Hmm. Slip one, knit two. I did that one. You could also do slip, slip, knit, and then you could pass that. Sorry, pass that stitch over. I don't know that anyone actually does that one, but hey, it'll look a little different, so we'll throw it in there. Why not? There's many different ways that you can achieve what you want your thing to go with. Oh, I do, I do. Sure, we can talk a little more about lace knitting on both sides. I mean, the only difference is that you don't have a rest row, um, but a lot of Shetland shawls do have, um, I shouldn't say that. So Shetland shawls, as well as um, the Estonian shawls and the Russian shawls, they all have both types of knitting, where it's both lace knitting and knitted lace and they use them for different things I can I mean for example I can think of how with um, hat shawls if you wanted more um, warmth <laughs> you would definitely want to use knitted lace whereas if you were doing something that was like a christening gown or something that you didn't really wear a lot that was very very open uh, very lightweight, um, something that you would treasure and take care of, then you could definitely do lace knitting where you were patterning on both rows. Okay, so here we go. We've done some different decreases again. So down here again, this was our slip slip knit, our knit two together. This was a slip one, knit two together, pass the slip stitch over. This one was slip two, knit one. Up here, I have a knit three together and you can see how it's it's not exactly directional, but it's a little bit directional. This was a slip, slip, slip knit together. So again, a little bit directional, but not terrible. This one does lean just a little bit to the right, just like our knit two together does. And this one does lean a little bit to the left, just like the slip, slip knit does. And then this one is a little more like one of those center double decreases where I did the slip, slip knit and then um, past that stitch over um, just a regular stitch, not even knitted, just for something different. So you can see the differences there in all those treatments. And sometimes we just add in yarn overs because we're increasing in the uh, stitch count. And then those yarn overs can be treated several different ways. If you're just increasing the stitch count, you can um, knit or purl that yarn over or if you want to tighten and close your yarn over Let's talk about that for a second Let me get over here. So let's say that we wanted to close down our yarn over right here so um, Let's say I've put a couple of yarn overs in because I'm increasing my stitch count so when I come back to these stitches on the back side, so I just threw in a couple of yarn overs, just, just put them in. Um, when I come back to those stitches on the back side, I am not going to just straight up purl them. Um, I'm going to purl them through the back loop because I want to close them down. Uh, you could also knit them through the back loop to close them down, but that will then leave, um, you know, a little 
bump on the front unless you're working in the round. A lot of times if you're working in the round and you're using a yarn over as an increase and they don't want it to be a true yarn over, they'll close it down with um, a knit through the back loop. And if you are having trouble with your yarn overs and they are not big and open and lacy like mine, what may be happening is that you are knitting through the back loop and you are closing your loop down. So if I purl through the back loop, just like this, I'll do it again, purl through the back loop. What that does it's, is it twists the base of the stitch. And when you twist the base of that stitch, it forces it to close more. So when we turn this around, you should see that my yarn overs, my yarn over increases are right here and right here. But boy, were they hard to find, weren't they? They're right there. And you can see where it's twisted the base of that stitch. So that is what happens. Um, if you don't have big, fluffy, open yarn overs, one of your problems may be that you are twisting the stitch closed. So maybe that's a little bit of troubleshooting for somebody. I hope it is. Um, and to fix that, you just need to make sure that you are not twisting the stitch. So you have to purl through that front bar. You can't purl through the back. Wasn't that fun? Now I have 22 stitches. All right, so when you're doing um, lace work and you have your patterning on both sides, all that means is, um, oh boy, I don't have like a pattern in mind here, peoples. Oh well, let's just take off and try it. Let's say we're gonna do this and then we'll knit two together and then let's slip slip knit. And then yarn over again. Oh, also the placement of your yarn overs based on whether your stitches lean left or right. Um, so if you yarn over before a knit two together, you're going to have a little smaller hole. The same if you yarn over after a slip slip knit than you would if you did a yarn over after a knit two together or before a slip slip knit. And that has to do with the directionality of your stitches. So these will be slightly smaller holes that I've done here for this purpose. Okay. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, aren't I? Isn't lace fun? So much fun. I do have a couple of PDF publications on my Black Sheep Fiber Emporium website as well um, about making lace. There's If You Can Knit, You Can Knit Lace and um, what's the other one called? It's a beginner and intermediate um, lace book, but they're both over in that lace section and they're just little PDFs that give you a lot of information about choosing yarns and choosing needles and um, there's some charts so you can practice chart reading because I find it much easier to read a chart than to um, read a written direction for a very large shawl. So there's some good information there. All right, if we're gonna pattern on both sides, that just means that um, when you come to your pattern, that instead of um, purling all the way across or knitting all the way across, and I've chosen to purl, so we're gonna stick with that, you will be working with these open yarn overs. And that may be, um, you know, you might be ignoring them. It could be that you're going to purl two together ahead of that one, and then do a yarn over, and then just work your way through and then say we do a slip slip purl just like this or it could be that you're actually going to be working the yarn over um, into your decrease so it could be that you're gonna come up to your yarn over just like this one right here and you'll purl two together sorry I gotta throw that yarn over in and then you might slip slip purl this and it really just depends on your pattern and whatever your pattern says to do. Um, oops, and I should have put a yarn over before that. So watch this, if you forget a yarn over and you remember fast enough, oh, you can just go pick it back up again. Best part about a yarn over. If you discover that you have forgotten it on the previous row, you can also just pick up that strand in between. The beautiful thing about a yarn over. It won't be as open as the yarn over you made while you were going through, but it will still be fairly open. Okay, so there we go. We've tried making a little bit of lace on both sides, and you can see some different treatments where here I have used that yarn over so it pulls it over. 
gives it a little different look than if I'm working to either side of it and then still putting a pearl in there. And again, it just really depends on your pattern and what your pattern is asking you to do. If I continue to do this, it will be a very open, very, very lacy piece versus um, a little more closed knitted lace. But those are the differences. Okay, so let's talk about some other fun stuff. I'm gonna flip this around. And there I am. Okay. Alrighty, alrighty. So, I hope that was a nice little primer, something to get you started with knitted lace. Um, there's lots of easy lace patterns out there. Um, some great ones to start with are washcloths because they're small. Or, um, oh, you can also try something like mitts. Some little mitts are nice because again, you can just practice a little bit of lace work and if you make a mistake, you rip out a small amount versus starting with a giant shawl and then being really upset and then throwing it in a corner and not looking at it for 10 years. None of you have done that right. Um, so you could start with a washcloth, you could try a cowl, you could do a hat with a touch of lace on it. Um, you know, I like lace in my socks because, hey, why not? Um, so let's say you like to make a lot of lace. Um, some tips for making lace are uh, learn how to read a chart because reading charts is um, an essential thing in our day and age. Uh, I know some people are just really against charts, but charts make it really, really easy to visualize what your pattern should look like. And then if you have a problem, it's really easy to see if your yarn overs aren't lining up correctly. Um, and you can like see the strong directionality of my yarn overs in this piece, right? Nice and strong. So it really helps you to read a chart. Um, practice with a small chart. You know, practice with a tiny, tiny little chart, something that's really easy that you can uh, learn from and a small piece, like I said, a little washcloth or a hat, something tiny. Just start there and, and learn. Um, you do read a chart, it's probably gonna be backwards, but you read a chart from, um, now I have to think, it's my bottom right. You read it from right to left and you always read it from right to left unless you have numbers on the opposite side where you would read it from left to right. So that's the key. If you have a rest row um, that's not charted, it may just say, on the wrong side, knit all the stitches, or on the wrong side, purl all your stitches, whatever it says. Um, then you won't have those rows written down. You'll only see the right side rows, there'll be odd numbers usually, um, and you'll always start from right to left, right to left, right to left and you'll just go back like a, like a typewriter. But um, if you have, this chart actually has both. So I have right sides and wrong sides on this one. And when you do that, then you go right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right. It's a little more complicated, but it's not terrible. Okay, um, some other really helpful things are sharp needle tips, sharp needle tips. Um, I like signature a lot. I like Haya Haya's a lot, super sharp tips. Um, once you become really comfortable with making lace, then you may find that you need a metal needle, whereas you had always worked on wood. Um, wood is grabby. So if you're making lace for the first time and you need some help, wooden needles are great. Bamboo or any kind of wood because they're gonna grab those stitches and hold on. Um, using a sticky wool when you are first learning how to make lace, like the beautiful Studio Donegal Tweed, uh, this fingering weight tweed, great stuff. Um, to learn how to make lace with because as I showed you on that tweed um, earlier when we were doing other things, it sticks, it grabs, it holds your stitches so they don't wiggle away. Um, another great thing is a stitch marker. So little tiny stitch markers like this guy. Hang on, where's my camera? There, see my tiny little stitch marker? These little textured stitch markers which we sell at Black Sheep Fiber Emporium are fabulous. Um, we sell them in 12 packs and they are so nice to just drop in after every repeat because it's much easier to count to 10 than it is to count to 90 or 110. And so if you can partition your work into small chunks so that your brain can manage it better, you are going to have a much better time with your lace. Um, these are also nice. This is like a light bulb shape or a gourd shaped stitch marker and it has um, a little safety pin opening. So there's the little safety pin opening, but these are nice to put in. Uh, actually like stick into your knitting. So after you have completed um, like one repeat, 
you can just stick this in your knitting and it will hang out. See how it's just hanging right there? But it's easy to take out because it's a little safety pin. Um, so those are great because you can mark your repeats and that way you don't forget if you're on repeat four or repeat 10 um, because I sometimes don't remember to write that down on my paper. And if you can't read your knitting very well yet, it can be really, really useful to mark your repeats um, and put those stitch markers in so that you are more successful because it makes you feel good and you build confidence and then you can go on to bigger and better things, right? It's always bigger and better things. So anyway, lots of fun stuff. Does anybody have more questions about lace? Um, let's see, there's, here's another kind of locking stitch marker. Um, tape measures, tape measures are always a good thing to have around. Uh, I also keep scissors on hand. I usually keep um, some kind of tapestry needle so that I have my piece ready to finish my work. Um, apparently I like to have hair bands because I'm always putting my hair up and down. Um, I desperately, desperately need a haircut, but soon, very soon. Um, I usually make sure that I have a Sharpie or some kind of pen in my bag. And like, I just have a little bag where I keep all of my notions and things. Um, and then I just put that in my bigger bag. So I have little bags that go in big bags. And then I can flop these from bag to bag if I want, so I can use them in a larger or a smaller bag. Um, sometimes I have, this is dental floss, but I actually use this to hold stitches. Um, and sometimes you might need this in a lace piece, um, especially if you're doing like a provisional cast on, cast off, and you need to hold stitches somewhere. Or if you're making a lace um, shirt or dress of some sort, you might need to hold some stitches for the underarm. I really love dental floss because it slides in and it slides out. Um, and I do use the waxed stuff and I've never had an issue with it um, staying in my knitting. I mean, sometimes it gets the wax flakes on it for a while and then it washes out. So it's not a big deal. Um, so I keep lots and lots of things in my bags and uh, it just makes it better for lace knitting. So what do you guys want to see on Friday? Um, I can, we can do more knit stuff, or I can do some tatty stuff, or some embroidery stuff. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to do for you. Um, we've done cables, we've done lace, we've done, um, oh, the Estonian books, those were fun, that was fun. We've done basic tatting and rings and chains and joining. We've done self-closing mock rings and adding a bead and tatting. Uh, we blocked several times between Tina and I, and I think she also did, um, I think she was doing a tutorial with beads as well. Uh, yes, yes she did. I watched that. So she did some bead work. Um, let's see. I, I don't know. We could have like a little discussion about, um, like spin and twist and ply because I do spin as well, or, um, I could show you how to spin. That's another option. We could have a little spinning session. Um, I can do both drop spindle and wheel. So that could be fun. At some point we will probably end up doing that. Um, I don't know, I guess, uh, let's see. Mm, let's do, oh, or there's that color work one. Let's do the color work one next week. So maybe the color work one, um, I'm going to skip Monday because Monday is Memorial Day and my friend's coming, but um, maybe Wednesday next week we could have a little discussion about those four different ways to do color work and I'll get my piecework article out and we'll talk about it and that could be fun. Um, so then Friday, hmm. Friday, I guess we should do some more tatting. So Friday, let's get back to tatting and um, I will find something else that we can talk about with tatting. We've done a lot of the basics. We could do onion rings. Onion rings are fun. Um, I don't know, we'll do some more advanced tatting. So we'll at least do onion rings and I'll find uh, one or two more things to talk about. I'll try to put a post up uh, either Thursday or Friday and we'll talk about that. And don't forget, Friday starts the slow yarn crawl too. So if you haven't bought your passport and you're interested, um, it's a great time to get it because you are going to get your first stamp um, with your passport. 
and if you buy it from Black Sheep, you get us. Uh, you get entered in our shop drawing, and we're gonna pull three prizes throughout the summer. Um, yeah, hear that, Tina? We're gonna do a giveaway three small prizes each month. We're gonna do one in June and one in July and one in August. Little prizes. Um, and then, of course, if you buy from any of the 35 other shops, you're going to get their sticker. You're going to get free pattern codes. We get free pattern codes every time uh, you order from us. So you always get um, something for free, just for fun. But anyway, I will see you all next time. Stay safe, stay healthy. Um, you know, please take care of yourselves. Stay crafting. Um, try to try to do the best you can to, you know, keep your morale up. It's really hard right now, but do the best you can. And um, I'll be back on Friday. We'll do something with tatting. I don't know exactly what yet, but we will do something with tatting on Friday. And uh, hopefully I'll be outside again because even though my neighbor is mowing, it's still much nicer out here than it is sitting in the house, right? Okay, well, I will see you all later. I have some work to do on the website and I have to start working on the newsletter, which needs to go out Friday. So um, hopefully, cross your fingers, I will get it done on Friday this time. Anyway, stay safe. Don't forget to go shop that Black Sheep Fiber Emporium website. Help us stay in business um, so we can keep bringing you fun stuff. And I can keep doing these Facebook Live posts, um, you know, on behalf of Black Sheep. So I'll see you all next time, Friday. We're going to do some tatting.